Our daughter hated bath times when we first started. She would scream and cry from the start all the way to the finish. But once we started doing some of these things, it really helped to calm her down and got her to enjoy bath times. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your little one stays warm. The cold is your enemy. Babies have really tiny bodies and can lose heat quickly and become cold very quickly. And a cold baby is a crying baby. Therefore, to ensure your baby does not get cold, it's important to do four things. Firstly, make sure the room that you're bathing your baby in is warm before you start undressing them. This may mean you need to heat up the room by using a space heater or close the doors and windows to the room to ensure there are no drafts. The second thing you need to do is make sure that the water temperature is not too hot or cold, as this can really make or break bath times. The ideal bath temperature for a baby is 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. And to check the water temperature, use a thermometer or place your elbow into the water. And the water itself should feel warm, not hot. If it feels hot or your skin goes red, the water is too hot. The third thing you need to do is make sure that the water is at the right height. The water should be level with your baby's shoulder so that they don't get cold. Alternatively, if you do not feel comfortable with using this amount of water, consider placing a wet washer on their chest as this will help to keep them warm. And the last thing you wanna to do to make sure your little one stays warm is that when you do get them out of the bath, make sure you quickly wrap them with a towel and only expose the sections of their body that you are dressing or applying moisturizing cream to. And this will just ensure that your little one stays warm while they're getting moisturized and dressed. Now, if your little one continues to protest during bath times, there are a few other things that you could try. The first thing is you could try using a pacifier. Newborns and babies find sucking extremely soothing. In fact, when a baby sucks on a pacifier or their hands, their brain releases the hormones dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins, and these hormones help to soothe and calm a baby. Therefore, if your baby is distressed in the bath, simply pop in a pacifier or position their hands close to their mouth to enable them to start sucking, and this may help to stop those tears. You could also try to bathe your baby when they are fed and well rested. A tired or hungry baby is a cranky baby. So it's always best to bathe your little one when they have been fed and are well rested. This may mean that you need to bath your baby during the day rather than as part of the nighttime routine as newborns and babies in general are very tired in the evenings and this can make bath times a little more challenging. The next thing to try is to gradually lower your baby into the bath. So for some babies, especially newborns, they find it distressing being lowered directly into the bath. And at times this position can actually trigger that startle reflex, which will cause your baby to start crying. So to reduce the likelihood of activating that startle reflex and help them become acclimatized to the water temperature, try gently lowering your baby into the bath feet first. You may also wanna think about providing your baby with additional support. So some babies actually find the sensation of floating in the bath confusing and distressing. And for these babies, providing them with more support by using a baby bath support, which helps to position your baby into a recline position, makes all the difference. So the wraparound support these products provide can help in making your little one feel more comfortable and safe when they're lying in the bath. But it is important to note that using a baby bath support does not mean that it is safe to leave your baby unattended as babies can often slip out of these products and drown. Therefore, it's always recommended that you never leave your newborn or baby unattended when they're in the bath. Also, once your little one is attempting to lean forward when they're in that baby bath seat and come into that sitting position, these products are no longer suitable or safe to use. If you wanna know when you can expect your little one to sit as well as achieve other gross motor and fine motor milestones, then make sure you click on the link in the description box below to get the free developmental milestone checklist so you'll know when to be expecting certain skills from your little one and when to be concerned.
The next thing you want to consider is the noise in the room. So another sensation newborns and babies can find overwhelming is the sound of running water when the bath is actually being filled up or drained. And you can limit your baby's exposure to this distressing noise by simply filling the bath before you bring your little one into the room and emptying the bath once your little one has left the room. Now, if this is impossible, consider using a white noise machine to mask the noise of the water. You can also try to distract your baby with song and conversation. Sometimes the simple act of distracting your baby during bath time can be the solution. And the best way to distract your newborn and baby is you. Singing to them a familiar song or talking to them can help comfort them and make bath time a little more tolerable. If your baby does get distressed in the bath, you could also try reducing the amount of time that they need to be in the bath by washing their face and hair before you immerse them in the water. So simply wrap your baby in a towel and keep their head uncovered and then you wash their head and their face before you put them into the bath. And this way you can actually give your little one a quick dip in the bath if they truly don't enjoy it. Another thing you might wanna try is bathing together. When you bathe with your newborn or baby, either in the bath or a shower, your baby gets to experience the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact. And when your baby has that skin-to-skin -skin contact, their heart rate and breathing regulates and their cortisol levels, which is their stress levels, actually reduce. And this can help to make your baby feel calmer and safer in the water and reduce the amount of crying. The other thing you can do is simply give the bath a break. For some babies, no matter what you do, having a bath can be distressing for them and then for you. And for these babies, just temporarily skipping the bath and having a sponge bath for a few weeks and then trying the bath again after a few weeks break can make all the difference and make it so much easier in the long run. In addition to having a bath, another activity that newborns and babies generally initially dislike is tummy time. And the level of protest parents often experience when they first attempt tummy time with their newborn can be extremely stressful and overwhelming and result in them skipping tummy time completely. But tummy time itself doesn't need to be distressing for you or your little one. So make sure you watch this video next to find out how you can make tummy time significantly easier for your little one. And if you've liked this video, make sure you hit that like button as well as subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Okay.